going to talk to you today about something that I call the 50, 75, 100 solution. And it's a way to see yourself as the common thread or common denominator in creating healthier relationships. Before I do that, simple question. How many of you have tough relationships? Not everybody. I think the entire world is raising their hand right now. Everybody has tough relationships, not to different degrees and different amounts, but we all have some form of tough relationships in our lives. And we typify them with questions like, why are they doing this to me? Why won't they stop? Why are they so bad? Why can't they just love me? It's all these why questions focused on the other person. Well, maybe it's you. Now, that doesn't mean that you're the problem, right? It's never, it's never you. But whether you're the problem or not, you can still be the solution. And that's the idea behind 50, 75, 100. Now, before I get into the math of it, there's three basic principles that you need to understand that form the basis of the whole thing, and they come from Buddhism. The first is happiness seeking. The second is interdependence. And the last is impermanence. Let me explain these. Happiness seeking is simply the idea that each of us does what we do in life just to be happy. We're all seeking our own definition of happiness. And sometimes, our seeking that happiness makes someone else happier or better off. So if you're volunteering your time or helping people, that makes you happier and it helps them and makes them happier. But sometimes, it actually comes at the expense of someone else's happiness. If there's only one cookie left and we both want it, and I get it, you don't. My happiness comes at the expense of yours. Now, using this principle, I dealt with something I deal with a lot coming from the Boston area. I was stuck in traffic coming home from Logan Airport, and uh, it wasn't a pretty sight. And this guy cut me off. Uh, he was in a, a white plumber van, cut in front of me, and the typical Bostonian response is, honk your horn, yell, even though he won't hear you, and cut back in front of him, right? Teach him a lesson. But I didn't do that. And the reason was happiness seeking. So what I recognized is, when he got on the highway, he didn't get on the highway to find my car and cut in front of it and put me one car further back. He actually just got on the highway to get where he was going, just like me. And for whatever reason, he decided getting one car further ahead would make him happier. And when I looked at it that way, I didn't have to feel attacked. I didn't have to feel like you know, I was uh, being sought out and, and wronged. And I just recognized, look, we're both in it for the same thing. And he's a little bit less uh, angry, a little bit happier. That's a good thing. Remember, I said he's a plumber. Maybe it's not just his happiness. Maybe he's trying to get to someone's house because a pipe burst and their house is flooding or something like that. Um, and that, that just let me say, well, wait, you know, it's not just about him. Like, there's other people who could be happier now, too. But you don't see that if you're feeling wronged or you're feeling attacked. So recognizing that his reason for doing what he did had nothing to do with me allowed me not to feel so attacked, and then I don't bite back. So it, it lets me step down my reaction and stay calm. So that's happiness seeking. The next is interdependence. So what is this? Is that none of us is all good or all bad, full stop. We are different ways in different situations with different people. And that's why bullies still often have friends. That's why you can ask one person out on a date, and they say no. You ask someone else out, they may say yes. It's also why people we love dearly, are very close to and care about, we still have really big fights with, we argue with, we disagree with. It doesn't mean we don't love them. It doesn't mean that we're bad people or good people. It means in different situations, we get along differently. And what that suggests is, change the situation, you get a different dynamic in the relationship. The last is impermanence. And actually, this is really just about hope. So this is the idea that everything can and will change. The reason why that's about hope is if you think nothing will ever get better, no matter how hard you work, you can't make the fighting stop, well, guess what? It's not going to stop because you're never going to try. But if you recognize that everything changes in the world, then you see that there's a point to putting in the work, to not feeling attacked and recognizing this is about them achieving their happiness and it just happens to cost me mine in the process. That it's an interdependence thing. We can change the situation and maybe get a different interaction and it's worth it because everything changes. So those three principles, those are the foundation of 50, 75, 100. And now the part everyone's been excited for is the math, right? That's everyone's favorite part. I'm going to start easy, and that's the 50. Right? What is this 50 number? Some of you may have already guessed this, but 
in every relationship, there's two, story, two sides of the story, right? There's you and there's them. You own your half, you're 50% of the total. That's the easy one to understand. And we gotta build to the harder one, the, the 75. And to do that, we actually wanna look within ourselves. Within us, we're split in half again. So we have our actions, it's what we're actively choosing to put out into the world, your thoughts, your behaviors, all of that, what you're putting out freely. And we have our reactions. Now that's based on what we're consuming from the world and how we choose to respond. You know, getting cut off on the highway, somebody eating your cookie, whatever it is that we take in from the world, we choose how we feel about that and how we respond. Now when I say choose, some people get really offended. You know, say, I didn't choose for them to say that to me. I didn't choose for them to do this to me. You may not have chosen their actions, but whether that affects you is ultimately your choice. Whether you respond in kind, start yelling, or whether you try to take it down a notch, or respond with compassion, or simply just walk away and not respond, those are all choices. Doesn't mean they're easy, but they're still choices. That's a power that we have. And that same action and reaction 50-50 split exists on the other side of the equation in them. This is where we start to build to the 75. So the other person's reactions are actually based on what you're putting out into the world. So how you're behaving, your actions, how you're responding through your reactions, that's the world that they're experiencing, and that's what they're gonna respond to. So if you can change what they're experiencing, you may get a different response out of them. So what we find is, we own our half, right? You gotta take responsibility for that. But in owning our half, we then influence half of them through what they're basing their reactions on. Now, it doesn't mean they're always gonna react the way you wish they would, but it does mean you can start to step down the hostility, the negativity, the attacking. That means you have control or influence over three quarters of any difficult relationship. When you can get to a better outcome and, and sway how three quarters of a problem is working, you can very quickly start to build to 100% better. So that's where these numbers, 50, 75, 100, come from. So I wanna share a specific example, not traffic, not cookies, but a really difficult one that I experienced in a work situation. I had a coworker who was absolutely brilliant, uh, really, really intelligent, really well respected, and also extremely good at arguing. Extremely good. Uh, and for whatever reason, she saw me as a barrier to her happiness. It wasn't always that way, but for whatever reason, she decided one day that I was standing in the way of what she wanted. And so she sent an email. And the email was a list of bullets of all the terrible facts about how bad I was and all the failures that I had and, uh, and the impact on the business. She didn't just send it to me, she sent it to me and our boss. So I was laying out, Brian's terrible in these specific ways and this is the impact. The thing about the, the facts that were so terrible is they actually weren't true. Now it's not just me subjectively being like, oh, I don't like what she said so it's not true. They genuinely weren't true. I don't know if she made them up I don't know if she just had bad information or she was confused or what. But I had a choice. How do I respond to this? Well, I could just try to refute every one of her points and I had plenty of data to do that. But she's really well respected, she's really smart and she's a really good arguer. So chances are, that's not necessarily gonna win for me. She may still come out ahead and her coming out ahead means I'm gone. So that's one path, the other is, I can just deflect and start arguing about how bad she is and has no, let's ignore all this. You know, she's, she's this terrible person over here and just try to take her out instead. But again, that's, that's not really gonna work out so well. She'll probably do a good job responding to that. And frankly, that's not a great way to be. So there's a third path and that's what we're talking about today, this 50, 75, 100 path. So what did I do? I said, thank you, which I know she wasn't expecting. And instead of arguing with each of those bullets or responding with like, and here's the data that shows that's wrong, and here's the data that shows that's wrong, I just said, look, I have a different view of the data that you're talking about, but that doesn't really matter. So I just dismissed the whole argument about who's right and who's wrong. And I said, if what you're talking about in terms of the impact on the business is real, we have a serious problem, and we absolutely should get together and talk about it. I'll find us some time this week. And so the three of us, me, her, and our boss. We sat down for this meeting at the mines, and sure enough, she came out guns blazing. She had a, her list of bullet points. 
And like I had the pre-warning because she sent them to me, so I, I had collected all the data that would refute all that. And I let her talk. And I sat there pretty calmly. I actually have a heart rate monitor on my watch so I could see I wasn't just, you know, like gritting my teeth and trying not to look angry. I genuinely stayed calm because I knew I'm not engaging in any of this. It's irrelevant. She just needs to say what she needs to say and then we'll move to the solution. So I let her say her piece. I didn't interrupt her. I didn't get worked up. And when she was done, I said, thank you. It's my new catchphrase. And I said, you know, I mentioned I have a different take on the data. Here's a couple of the things that I'm seeing. And I mentioned two or three of them really quickly. I gave my source just to bring some validity to it. But again, I said, that really doesn't matter. It's not about whether your data is right or mine's right, because there's still this issue that you're talking about. And however we get to that, that's a real problem for the business. So then I did something very different from what she expected. Right, if I was this blocker to her happiness, what I said was, what is it you want to have happen? So I asked her to define happiness. Right? She was definitely not ready for that. So she just kind of stuttered and stumbled a little bit because she wasn't ready for it and then said, you know, she said her piece, what it was she actually wanted, which shockingly wasn't the thing she was pointing out in her email and had nothing to do with me getting fired. So getting her to, to speak out what is it that you're actually trying to achieve just totally changed the whole interaction. And the reality is it was actually a really good idea. It was something we should be focused on. I can get behind that. So I said, thank you. Right, as I had come to do pretty regularly at that point. And um, I said, you know, that's a really good idea. I totally agree with you. Here's a few things I think I can do to help with that. What do you think? And so I went from being this blocker to her happiness, from stepping aside a little bit and letting her bring it to the table to actually facilitating getting her to her happiness. Now, what I won't say is we took each other's hand and went skipping off into the distance and saying kumbaya. That did not happen. And we were in two different cities, so... Logistically, it was tough, but that definitely wasn't going to happen. This isn't, you know, utopia. It didn't solve everything and everything was perfect, but what it did do is stop this direct attack. We never had another situation like that again, and we were professional with each other. We could actually work together, and we could work on this thing that she was so interested in making happen because it was a good thing for everybody. That would never have happened if we started butting heads and arguing and fighting. So as we started with Buddhism, I kind of have to bring it back because Buddha's just pretty brilliant. There's this great quote that I think sums the whole thing up. We conquer anger with non-anger, badness with goodness, meanness with generosity, and dishonesty with truth. It's the old adage of you don't fight fire with fire. It's water that squelches flames. When you look at 5075-100 and you remember the happiness seeking, the interdependence, the impermanence, the ways to get there, you find that you can actually be the water in even your most heated situations. Thank you. <laughs>